Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. And we're talking about celebrations. Uh, That's good stuff. Yay! Okay, it is autumn in the Northern Hemisphere here, and it is my favorite time to celebrate, which isn't because it's my birthday or anything. I just love autumn. Not because of pumpkin spice, even. I, I actually think cider is the king of autumn flavors i think one of our i won't first... die on that hill though enjoy your pumpkin spice it's totally <laughs> fine i think one of our first autumn uh, autumn celebrations is actually the first time we go up to the orchard right up here at the yes house get apples. okay celebrations are a huge deal for us because both of us grew up in in sort of atmospheres where there was some subduedness subdued yeah, right that's a good like word a, for there was it. like a, a bit of a a, like a wet blanket for different mm-hmm. reasons. You know, my mom had some mental health issues and celebrations caused her pain. And so I get why she didn't, wasn't able to celebrate perfectly all the time. But um, your house, it sounds like it was more of just like a. Just a sort of an imagination or... <laughs> thing, honestly. I think um, a little ennui, the I way my parents grew up, yeah, ennui, malaise, whatever. Oh, right. And passing but the down way the generational they grew up, it was not um they their imagination of what the celebrations would be was uh different than ours is. And when I talk to people about celebrations, I usually think that they'll be really fun conversations. But what I've noticed, and you just did this yourself, I asked about celebrations, and this is something that happens in client sessions with me all the time. People start listing holidays. And it happened in a class I was in recently, too, where the professor was trying to talk about ritual, but he just kept talking about holidays and at that super white Americanized holidays. Mm. So I want to just delineate right away. When I say celebration, I mean all the ways that we acknowledge um transformation change accomplishment just it's like the the chance to positively mark an occasion uh it's i came late to celebrations just like i came late to crying (laughs) (laughs) so i wasn't allowed to cry when i was sad very much when i was a kid you could cry for being angry so it took me i don't know like 35 years to have my first good cry And celebrations took even longer. I, I just, for the longest time, I just panicked over any, any celebration. And I didn't even know why I would go into full body freeze yeah. just at the idea, even the word celebration. In fact, my best friend all through my twenties, um, she was really sweet about this because she knew that I struggled deeply with celebration. So she would come over and help me every time it was one of my kids' birthdays. That's really she would nice. come and make sure that like I was having a party and it was a party and it was fine and it was safe. And um yeah, it was it was so helpful because I I just um enough I'll call it trauma. It was trauma, but I don't mean this I really don't mean to pile this on my parents. Their way of doing things just left this sort of thumbprint on me around so, celebration. Yeah. Uh, so celebrations aren't necessarily simple to just like pick up and do. Right. And, so, uh, but they over. can be amazing if you can take back um, the the center, the, like the centerpiece of yeah. celebration as an acknowledgement and a chance to, to experience positivity about right. some threshold that's yeah. been crossed anything at all you want you celebrate large and small i i mean i am just i am so here for it now i love celebration um now that i've come to the party i am here for the party 
So what makes a celebration for you? What makes a celebration? And why does this matter to relationships at all? I get, I'll get there. Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> um, so what matters to me in a celebration is, I mean, the, the, the visibility is the key, like seeing whatever it is you're celebrating, seeing the thing. There you go. Acknowledging. That's why it matters to relationship too. When you celebrate something I have done, some threshold I've crossed, something I've accomplished, I feel so seen. And feeling seen is feeling loved. Like, yeah. That's the, yeah. When we say, I want to be known, that's what we mean. And so when you celebrate me, I feel a sense of seenness that I, I, okay, I don't know any way not to be cheesy. I feel healed. I feel a healed energy like poured all over me. I feel, um, bits of my, of my childhood get to be addressed and my adult self gets to feel playful. And I, I feel seen. And it also makes it possible for me to do hard things. Um, like the anticipation or no, just, you know what? Fact. It's, it's the, um, starting to trust starting to trust over time that accomplishments and oh. and um energy that the energy that i expend and the, the ways that i go out and i put myself out there and do scary things and 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 it won't go unnoticed it won't go unnoticed mm. and that took years to trust because it took years to build yeah um yeah. so some of this is about just getting creative how are we going to acknowledge each other and uh, I think what, and and looking for ways to yeah. that that's been what has changed most for me personally, as in our relationship, is I look for things to celebrate, versus waiting for them to sort of somehow make themselves known to me. I look right. for them. So I went and did a little digging. I've already cited some research on the power of ritual in relationship um, in an earlier episode. Um, the data's in, we know that ritual helps. And there was actually, I came across, um, another study. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, meta-analysis about rituals and routines in, in families in, and the positive impact of having these acknowledgements of having not just the routine and let's differentiate between routine and mm -hmm. ritual, but, but also this, this celebratory acknowledgement and what it does to solidify the microculture that we are. And when I say family, I'm counting any anyone who counts themselves a family, no matter how many people are part of that family, no matter how many non-human creatures are yeah. part of that family, yep. it, the whole the whole shebang. It has a positive effect. There's a there's a um there is a not only a uh a certain care that we can feel, but also being able to trust that what we do and who we are will be seen and known yes. creates a sense of, of bonding and comfort that transcends the labels that we might put yep. on our particular relationships. Yeah. I it, love that. It's a, it's a level of connection or a connection at a level that, um, well, for, for my experience, it's easy to skip over. It's like easy to miss mm. by just getting caught up in the every day. So that happened. Um, that happened once in our relationship a while back. We were um, newly engaged and I was graduating with my bachelor's oh, degree. So yeah. I did all of my yep. my degrees later in life. So um, I was getting my bachelor's degree and I finished it and you weren't going to come to the graduation. Yeah. You were like very non-attached to it. It was just sort of not a big deal. And you had done the college thing at a more traditional age and, um, and hadn't, hadn't had the, the celebrations and acknowledgements either. And I, and I remember this being a real turning point in our relationship. It was yeah. when, um, when I finally had the hard conversation with you and it was through a lot of tears saying like, I feel, I feel like what I've done doesn't matter. I feel like 
pushing myself to, to, to do this work, not for you, for me. Right. For I it. felt invisible. Like it just didn't matter. And luckily I was able to squeak that conversation out in time for, in time. for us to change direction. And yeah. you had the children make me it was this great, um, chest of chocolate, mm -hmm. which was wonderful. And, um, and we celebrated with food and yeah, there. there was, there was a, a thing and they came and they watched me graduate. And I'm really grateful that, that I managed to say the thing. I mean, this is going so way I, back. This I'm... is, this is way back in our relationship. This yeah. is 2012. It's like hard to imagine from here, but I couldn't. I wasn't going to get to the celebration piece yes. until I felt like I could trust that yep. who I was was going to be seen. And it wasn't enough for me. It wasn't enough to just acknowledge what I'd done myself. I really wanted to be seen in community. And in this case, yep. in my family. Yep. Um, it, it mattered. It just mattered. Oh, and I'm wrong. It was 2013. Of course it was. Of course. Um, I I do think we should differentiate too between routines and rituals really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so routines, rituals, habits, celebrations, these are all words that get kind of glommed together, but a routine is great. Routines are super useful, awesome. You, they're basically, you know, a set of actions that, ex that you experience a trigger. And then from the trigger, you, a whole initiate initiation sequence has yep. begun. And now it, you do a set of time. I brush my teeth and, and now blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. And a habit, a habit's useful because it's something that you've now practiced. It, it, it has to do with that routine that, so what is the way that we remember to do our routines? We remember through habit and through these, these triggering events, but a ritual and a celebration, those are different and it matters. They're different because they're about the intentionality behind it. Humans are meaning making creatures. We just are. I think octopuses are too. Octopi, octopi. Octopuses. Okay. Um, For the purposes of in, this podcast. I'm assuming that octopuses are holding little birthday parties and stuff with like little yeah. cakes and little candles. I would, I would imagine. I just assume. Probably not so much with the candles. No, no, definitely candles. I. <laughs> they're very smart. They're very, very smart. Okay. I. It's the intentionality I, as a conscious, as meaning making creatures. The meaning we've assigned yeah. to the celebration, to the ritual. That's where, that's where it is. So, so what do we do? So how do we have more celebration in our life? And um, well, step one, don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, make it make it easy. Don't don't overcomplicate it. it don't, these are really important things. You don't have to be dazzle it. But that's where. So my mother's trauma about celebration. I. As I as I began to have children myself, and I started to realize what what was what's what it took to have a birthday party, or yeah. to make Christmas happen, or to go to a graduation and have a graduate, like all these things. Oh my God! Of course, she was overwhelmed. She didn't there's feel supported lot. and held, and, and she didn't get cooperation from my father. And if she thought that there was a standard she had to meet, she, and she painted a picture in yeah. her mind. We used to talk about that all the time. She had a an idea in her head about what she should be able to make happen. And if she fell short, she beat herself up about it. And it was terrible to watch. It was so hard. And then as I hard. grew up and realized, oh my God, she, she really wanted it to be something and she couldn't. And then she was caught in her own cycle of falling short. And yeah. So step one, don't overcomplicate it. It's, it's okay to have simple celebrations. The In fact, is to acknowledge I think the they're meaning. probably my favorite ones. I don't, I can't think of a better celebration than some of the simplest things we've done, like going up and driving up to this little lake that's near, nearish our house and simply sitting in our lawn chairs, watching the sunset mm -hmm. and saying, saying whatever needed to be said in that moment. Yeah. It, like that that's remarkable yeah for for my purposes the simple celebrations make the the meaning that you're celebrating most clear it can get really lost in the in the, the frippery yeah frippery I mean, nice um birthday 
parties are celebrations, and if they get big enough, the more it stops elaborate being about the the birthday. Weddings can certainly turn <laughs> into that. No, <laughs> preposterous. <laughs> I mean. I definitely yeah. felt that we did yeah, a, a really good job reining our wedding in and I still felt it. Yep. There was a line that could be crossed where we were going to be so caught up in trying to do the thing that we missed yeah. the opportunity to be together. And that's not about size. It's about, can you still be yeah. present or is it about the show? And so I would invite lots of celebration for, for all the moments, big and small, where you are experiencing transition, change, accomplishment, any place where you think somebody might value being seen. being seen. And if you aren't having celebrations thrown for you, yes, of course, celebrate yourself. Or even if you are, celebrate yourself. Absolutely. Um, I mean, my favorite way is to masturbate. But, you know, you do you. You do or you. Or wait, wait. That was what that I was, was That Never is mind. what you do. Anyways, I, I think that one of my favorite celebrations is one that we're going to do in just a few minutes. So it's... It's a new school year and um, we hadn't had a chance to do this yet. So I just wanted to do um, wishing papers. They're just the little pieces of paper that you write a wish on and you, and you, you set fire to them and they just sort of like, they, they just like, it's like magician's float paper. Up a little they float and up a little away. and poof away. We'll do them in a fire safe area. We're not in California. It'll be okay. But um, having a little moment like that to mark the transition from summertime yeah. into autumn um, and to let the kids feel it with us, it, yeah, I mean, it'll take like five minutes. And when we were, um, when we were getting married, uh, there was a moment during our, not the wedding, but the day before it, when I realized, oh, oh, this is really happening. And you and I had a glass of champagne on our side porch right. and it was just the two of us. In many ways, that was that was it. That was the celebration because the celebration was getting to that day and having done the things that we wanted to do. Right. Um, that was celebrating the accomplishment of wow, we pulled it off. Our first yeah. really huge project, just the two of us doing this thing. And that <laughs> that brings me to a point I definitely oh, wanted to make. This is yeah. very important. Okay, you're not going to look really right here. Yeah. Um, the labor in celebrations. Yeah. So we. <laughs> so I just want to start by saying the celebration is about being seen. Yeah. And if someone needs to consistently come to you and say, "Would you please look at this thing for me and tell me it was good?" It's not the same. It's true. It doesn't feel the same. I mean, I know this from from personal experience too. It doesn't it just slaps different? And, oh boy, you've been <laughs> listening to the teenagers. Um. So for years in the early part of our relationship, you would swear you just didn't see those things. Uh, yep. And, and we argued about this a lot because yeah. I was sure you were smarter than that. <laughs> um, I know that there are many different ways of being in the world and lots of people don't pick up on all the nuances and all the things, but when your partner is consistently feeling unseen, it's worth thinking about how can I, how can I adapt my way of being in the world to see some of those things? Yeah. So one of the things that you had to do differently was start paying attention to my calendar. Like what, what's going on for her? What's you right. asked me more questions yep. and more, most importantly, you started asking me what mattered to me. Yes. Those are, that's, those are the conversations that so you, you didn't want know. to have if you so want you asked, to celebrate. Does someone. this matter? What do it, you want to yeah. acknowledge it? Like I, uh, for years, I didn't want to acknowledge my birthday because it just uh, it is not good memories to it. So I didn't want to. And then I did. And luckily, you were still asking. So when I wanted to celebrate it, you were there. But, but there's one more piece. The, back to the, uh, back to the, the labor. The ick. Sharing the labor of celebrations. We've talked about the um, dis disparities in labor in households, especially households that have fallen into very typical gender norms um, in the United States culture. We all have this, you know, There's lovely a... 1950s picture of some sort of bizarre masculine feminine. It's all nonsense. Yeah. We know it's nonsense. But, but there it is. There it is. Sitting there as a story. And one of the fallout pieces has been that... Um, 
cisgendered guys frequently aren't uh, stepping up to the plate when it comes to the labor in celebrations. This is not all of them, of course, but it happens over and over again. I mean, I hear at least one story about this every single week from different people. This is a constant. I see it everywhere. So what did you do to finally shift that? It was not, I, it was not like an inconsequential shift from well, expecting thing celebration to just happen around you to participating fully. Well, this wasn't easy for me because I am a young, youngest child in my family of origin. But Adlerian psychology would tell us that that matters a lot. Okay. Youngest well, this child, um, birth order matters for them. I decided that I. I wasn't a little baby child. Ah, oh, you got your Roy Kent on. Roy Kent on. <laughs> I um I wanted to participate fully as as an adult, and it wasn't straightforward, and it wasn't easy. But the messages were coming from everywhere, um, I, like all all through life. That this you as a woman female-bodied girl person in this world. That's me. We're having to do a crap load of work. I was also an eldest and highly parentified yep. child in a in a family that um, ran as a as a um, the matriarchal line was incredibly strong. Yeah. I was expected to make all the things happen. That was just expected. You and were and who were you expected to do this by? All of the, all of the um, boy people. Boy people. So um, I in my family. I yes. didn't like that. I didn't like the sound of it. I didn't like the feel of it. And I saw that I was doing that, and I wanted to not just. So even though be you different. had stepped away from many gender norms, um, yeah, that I'm not a big fan of. But I don't. I don't think that's surprising for myself. You're not. I mean, you definitely are in the gender fluid. I've been there. a little confused, but, about it all. But but this one, I mean. It lets you like hang out, sit back, and let celebration happen. I can see why it was tempting. Sure, and I also can knock that shit off too. And not yeah, because <laughs> so yeah, I saw what your life had been like. I mean, I literally saw it, and I watched you grow up. I I knew you the whole time, and I saw what happened, and um, I didn't like the inequity of it, and I wanted to fix it. I didn't want to just pick up my share now. I wanted to make up for everything you had had to do before. So what I saw happen from my side was that you, you did see that. And at first your idea of helping was to ask me, well, just tell me what to do. That was not, I actually disliked so just, that just even more. Plan everything out and then I'll do it my way. Right. So how about what, if I plan it all out and do it my way? No, no, I was, need to help you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, I felt like then I had to, um, give you very clearly delineated tasks that would make you feel good about yourself yeah. so that you could feel like you were participating. In other words, I, it was very infantilizing well, and I felt this yeah. dynamic we were in. And I remember pulling back and saying, well, so you're just going to have to be responsible. I'm not doing this. There were like three celebrations in a row. They were all birthdays. And I was like, no, not doing it. I'm going to, I will show up and I will make a dessert. That's it. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, those poor kids. I don't think those birthdays were all that good. <laughs> took well, a while to get going. It takes some time. Um, and in the meantime, they had my delicious, I did make amazing desserts. desserts so um, there's that. But it's what gave birth to things like the the scavenger hunts yep. that you celebrate with. Yeah. Our, our Christmas sock hunt is a thing to behold. You wouldn't think hunting for socks would be that amazing, but it it's is. It's a pretty good thing. We should hold a public Christmas sock hunt because it's amazing. Anyways, um, you when you finally did that, I saw you engage your creativity yeah. in, and that let me do two things. One, set down some of the actual labor that I had been doing, but also enjoy what it felt like to watch your creativity, to watch you come up with new things, things I wouldn't have done. And that meant letting go of control, letting go of the outcome, letting yeah. go of my expectation of how it had to be. And that was a wonderful lesson for the inner figure of my mother that lives in me, not my actual mother, but the part of her, the voice of her that lives in me that says, it's supposed to be a certain way. And if it's not that way, everything will 
be broken and wrong and everyone will be crying. None of that was true. All I needed to do was let go of the idea that it needed to be a certain way. And all of a sudden, boom, there was whatever Ken was going to make. And I had to pick up the idea that I was someone who could make those things happen, who did have ideas and who did have a vision that he could uh, work on to, to bring to life. Well, it was awesome. And it worked out really well. So if you haven't been um, celebrating as much as you would like to, keep it simple. Don't miss an opportunity by overcomplicating it. Yeah, because I had definitely done that. That kept me away from planning celebrations because I would try to make them too big. They would overwhelm me and I just wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Way better to just do something that means something. Yeah. It doesn't have to be ornate. I think that can the key. be start it with doesn't have to be. What, what's the feeling? What's the meaning yeah. behind this? What's the feeling I want to have? And what's mean? the smallest, simplest thing I could do to make this celebration happen now? Don't put celebration off for some future date. Don't. I mean, yeah, you want to plan a wedding and have a wedding or you want to plan, you know, Christmas because Christmas happens on a day or whatever. But there are a million reasons to celebrate, to celebrate each other, to celebrate your love, to celebrate your children's accomplishments, but also just to celebrate their beingness. There are a million yep. reasons to celebrate, celebrate the full world. moon. Like celebrate, there's, yes. Just look celebrate around. The fact what that you what have matters to you? Dinner on your plate. Yeah. yeah. And grab onto it and do something to celebrate it now is that energy well, that has been transformative to our everyday. It and I, has. I would love to see more people. And you know what's fun about it is we get to learn about each other. Things that we might not see. Because now I know what I know a whole lot of things that matter to you that I wouldn't if you weren't like this. Look, hey, you know, come with me and, and watch the sunset. Oh, I have the sunset matters to you. Absolutely. And Many I have things. celebrated a Lego creation before. Like the yeah. finishing of a Lego yep. um extravaganza. Um, I we have, have celebrated many paper endings, many, many writings of you. papers yeah. and about a hundred million uh, PRs in the gym. Oh, sure. Like, you know, set right. a personal record in the gym and there's the little celebration of the moment of like, yes, I did that thing. But then there's also, yeah. So it just happened today. I finally, I've had an injury for almost two years. And today I picked up over 200 pounds again after a long, a long time. time of not being able to do really even great thing. like 50 and I love that you were there to acknowledge it, celebrate it, call it out, Got a notice picture. it. It you didn't need to take a picture <laughs> in that moment. We'll do an episode about taking <laughs> pictures though, because that's a whole thing. Um, but it was yeah, I... it that's the that was when I got to feel the seenness. Yeah. And so what matters super, to you? What grateful for that what matters to you what matters to your partner to whoever you've got around you that matters to you okay everybody there go celebrate certainly celebrate something is worth celebrating today big small in between thanks for listening thank you for listening to the project relationship podcast with dr jolie hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to jolie at joliehamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.